hey everybody, long time no see. I am Beth, this is Bravely Being Yoga, and uh, you asked and we deliver. I've had some people asking for uh, chair practice, some simple uh, yoga movements, some asana that can be done in a seated position uh, or with the use of a chair. A gentle practice may be something for my friends that getting up and down off the floor feels really uncomfortable. Maybe if you're rehabbing from an injury, uh, maybe if you're sitting all the time at work and you just need something to kind of insert in the middle of the day to help you move through all of the stress of a normal work day. So in any case, as always, please consult your primary care physician and your mental health professional before participating in these videos. And here we go, let's just get started. All you'll need for this is a chair. <laughs> I recommend that you also have something sticky to put your chair on. So do not practice with a chair on a wood floor or a tile floor without a yoga mat or a carpet or something because we don't want the chair to slide out from under you at any point because obviously that's not safe, doesn't feel safe, doesn't work well. So if you can, go ahead and find a comfortable position for yourself. It's best, if possible, to draw the sits bones a little bit away from the chair as far as you don't want your back resting on the back of the chair. It's gonna detract a little bit from your body's ability to really harness the strength that you need to be in these poses. And we're gonna really move in a brief way. We're gonna just take a few poses that are really um, getting a lot of bang for your buck so that you can, again, use these at any time in any place. So if you'd like, go ahead and press both of your feet into the floor, drawing the spine up as if the top of your head were drawing towards the ceiling while your sits bones are grounding into this chair. And you might notice as you start to focus on softening into the chair that the front of the body starts to expand. The hips, the hip flexors can expand and release a little bit because the spine becomes really strong. So it's this long energy moving through the back space of your body. The collarbones are soft. Maybe the eyes float closed, if that feels comfortable to you. The rib cage starts to really soften and release down towards the hips. But then the belly button draws towards the spine so that there's this beautiful holding in the center of the body. From here, the shoulder blades can line either side of the spine in the back of the body, and the shoulders become soft, maybe dropping down away from the ears from the first time today. And, and as you start to focus on the sensation in the center of your body, maybe the eyes are closed or maybe they're floated open, but go ahead and drop the attention from the chattering of your brain on an exhale, down into the heart space. And just notice what's going on there. Notice the way that the body is breathing, the way that the chest inflates on the inhale and softens on the exhale. And on your next exhale, take that attention from the heart space and drop it down to the belly. Noticing the way that as we inhale, the stomach expands and as we exhale, it contracts and softens towards the spine. Inhaling and opening, exhaling and drawing in. On your next inhale, maybe both hands float up above the head. Maybe fingertips touch, drawing the hands to the center of your chest. Notice the way the shoulder blades continue to soften down the spine. One more time, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, hands to heart center. From here, place the hands on your legs, anywhere that feels comfortable to you, and then go ahead and drop the chin towards the chest. Maybe softening one ear to one shoulder. And on your exhale, chin drops to chest. 
and then send the ear towards the other shoulder, noticing the space you're creating between each vertebrae. Bring the chin back down to the chest, maybe take a little bit of organic movement, rocking the head from side to side. And then on your inhale, you can draw the chin away from the chest, coming back to that long, strong energy through the spine. Inhale, draw both arms up above the head. And then exhale, drop left arm to right knee. Start to spin around towards the side of your chair, making sure to drop both sits bones down equally. Coming into a little twist here. Both knees continue to press towards the front of your room. Inhale, float the gaze back first. Exhale, unravel your spine, and we'll do the other side. Inhale, both arms go up above the head. Exhale, dropping the hand to the knee, starting to rotate around your chair, but we continue to draw both hips forward. Maybe even bringing a little extra effort to draw the, the hip forward so that both knees are in alignment. Inhale, gaze floats back to center. Exhale, unravel the body. Check in with how you feel. Notice how the center of the body feels. And then whenever you feel ready, we're gonna stand up for just a minute. We wanna build a little bit of heat in the body and I wanna show you that there's a way to use your chair for some really typical movements that we do in yoga all of the time. So if you'd like, you can stand and we're gonna angle the chair so that you can see kind of the length of the body here. Making sure as always that the chair is placed on something really secure. Standing close to the back of the chair here, we're gonna find that same alignment that we found while we were seated. So the tailbone is dropping down towards the floor. There's an opening in the front of the hips. The crown of the head is reaching up towards the ceiling. The rib cage is soft. The collarbones are softening towards the floor. And the shoulder blades are lining either side of the spine, okay? So from this beautiful, long posture, Inhale, reach up through the chest. Maybe the gaze starts to float up towards the ceiling. Exhale, start to forward fold. That can look a lot of ways. We can stay right here, or you can start to drop the hands towards the seat of the chair. Noticing how we can use this to kind of draw the weight forward so that we're not sitting back in the heels. Inhale, halfway lift, start to reach the crown of the head forward. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise. Hug the belly button to the spine. Start to walk the hands up the chair all the way to standing. And exhale, back to your nice tall mountain pose. Okay? One more time. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, start to walk down the chair. Inhale, halfway lift, hug the belly button towards the spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, root to rise, drawing both feet towards the floor, hugging the elbows in towards the center of the body. And exhale, back to mountain pose. One other variation we might take here is that we can kind of shift our weight back and forth from either foot and then go ahead and start to draw the left foot back long. We're gonna angle the toes and the hips up towards the front corner of our mat here so that we're on this diagonal. We're bending generously into that front leg and we can keep that right hand on the chair. And then we start to open up the chest to the side, maybe even reaching that back arm out long coming into a modified version of our warrior two. You can always play with the balance here if it feels comfortable or you can keep that hand on the chair. When you're ready, draw the hand to the hip. Rotate both hips towards your chair first and then step the foot to meet. And then we can do the other side. 
So drawing the right heel back this time maybe, whichever side you didn't just do. Toes are angled up to the front corner of your mat. We're bending generously into that front leg. The hips and the toes on the back foot are angling up towards the corner of our mat. And then maybe we reach that back arm out long for warrior two. Softening the shoulder blades along the spine. Go ahead and bring that hand back to the hip. Draw both, he, uh, both hips towards your chair and then step the foot forward. Okay, so there you go. That's just a couple of movements that we do a lot in yoga. Go ahead and come back to a seated position in your chair. Now that the hips are a little bit warmed up, something that really feels nice to do, you can start to draw one knee in towards the chest, noticing how that feels. You can kind of move the hip in its socket even a little bit. And then if it feels comfortable, keep that opposite foot planted into the floor and you can cross the heel over the knee. That might really draw a lot of your attention to the outside of that hip and that's okay. We're not ever forcing ourselves into anything in yoga. We can always stop or come out of something if it doesn't feel good. But here's a great opportunity to really open up through the outside of that hip. Continue to flex through that top foot so that there's a lot of support for the ankle joint and the knee joint. Taking a few breaths here, drawing the attention back to the breath. Anytime we start to feel distracted or frustrated in our practice. And then on your next inhale, use your hand to draw the knee back into the center of the body, placing that foot down on the floor. We can do the other side. So hugging the opposite knee into the chest, maybe rocking it or rotating it from side to side just a little bit. And then when you feel ready, you can cross that foot over the knee, flexing through that top leg, rotating out, noticing the deep stretch on the outer hip. Always drawing awareness to the bottom leg as well, noticing how we're still supporting the body by hugging that outer hip in so that the body is safe, the joints are all safe. Whenever you feel ready, both sides of the body feel even, you can draw that knee back to the center, placing that foot down on the floor. Drawing your attention one more time back to that long line of energy in the center of the body. Hug the belly button towards the spine. You can place your hands on your legs, or you can even place one hand down in your lap and place the other on top of it if you'd like. Maybe the thumbs draw together. Softening the shoulder blades along either side of the spine. Maybe the eyes stay open, or you can float them closed if you'd like. And then notice how you can soften the hairs on top of your head. The lines across the forehead soften. The eyes become like liquid. The cheekbones are soft. The ears are dropping down towards the floor. The jaw releases. The throat is soft. The collarbones are sinking down into the body. The ribs are relaxed. Both arms are soft and held by the body. Each vertebrae along your spine is supporting the body, but it's really open and released. Both hips are soft. The front creases of the hips are open. The knee joints are relaxed. The ankles are drawing down into the floor and the feet are soaking into the floor as if there was mud that the floor was just drawing your feet down into. And then realizing that the whole body is connected, you're not separate pieces. You are one complete and whole body. If the eyes have been closed, you can flutter them open if you'd like. You can start to Wiggle the fingers and the toes a little bit, bring a little bit of movement back to the body, maybe even stretching the arms up long. 
and then you realize, hey, that's it, you just did yoga. It's short and sweet, something you can do anywhere, anytime, something that hopefully you can integrate into your day at natural times that work well for you. So I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day and reach out, let me know what else you would like, what else you need. And in the meantime, the light in me honors and recognizes the light in every one of you. Namaste.